So uh, I, I watched Jerry. I watched this documentary, and I loved every second of it. I was fascinated by it. Uh, I love NBA history. I was a kid who collected basketball cards, not baseball cards. Did you did you learn anything, Jerry, from it, or did you just enjoy the walk down memory lane? Well, Colin, I was obviously know an awful lot about what went on then, that point in time, and I think the biggest thing that that I got from it is that uh, this was like the ultimately driven athlete who had enormous skills, okay, enormous. When you watch his physical ability, even at that point in time, I'm not sure we've seen an athlete like him in this league ever. Uh, but combine that with the skill level, the intensity level, but more importantly, he had enormous belief in himself. And I don't care how great you are, there's sometimes when you lose games that are really important for you, you have a question in your mind. I don't think Michael in his life has ever had a question in his <laughs> mind about whether or not he was going to succeed before. And I don't think I've seen another athlete like him in my life. You know, Jerry, um, Scotty Pippen, some have said it's been unfair. You played with Elgin Baylor and Wilt. You were a leader. Um, but it's tough being sometimes a leader because you have to include people and everybody's got a different personality. Do we undervalue Scotty Pippen's ability to be Robin to Batman? Is that, you know, having been in a role where you were the guy and played with other stars, can that be difficult? Well, you know what? No, I, I, I think it really depends on the person. Okay. And their particular personality. Uh, you know, after watching this, the one thing that uh, I communicated with today with Lawrence Frank, uh, we'd been watching the thing, and he's in New Jersey. Obviously, we're separated. We work together with the Clippers now. And one of the things that, you know, I, I just want to bring up something in my career, and I am not. I don't want to talk about myself, but we were in the NBA Finals nine times, nine times, and we won once. And... Michael had said something that I think is really, really compelling to me. He said, winning has a price, and it does have a price. And that price for me has been completely the opposite of that great feeling that he has. You go through the summers, you worry about some of the things that, are, that, are, uh, uh, that you have no control over, um, and yet you look to your impact, you think you have an impact on a game, and you lose. Uh, for me, it's all my life. Sometimes I felt like a loser, and I had a pretty pretty amazing career for someone during my era. And um, we all take it differently. And we can be competitive, we can be quiet, we can be a lot of different ways in with our personalities, but his personality, you, you watch it. He's one of my favorite people that I've ever been around in my life. I know Michael. I've been around him. I've enjoyed some really fun times with him. Um, that documentary, when you see him interacting with the players, a lot of it, he was kidding. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Something he was not. Some of he was not. And I think you have to have a certain kind of personality to do what he did with his life. But this is one of the, he's a man's man. Trust me, a man's man. I love being around him. He doesn't change. I wonder if we had all the social media today, uh, would he be some that one to get on there and extol his virtues? I don't know. I don't think he would have. His play, his play dictated who he really was. And uh, a remarkable player. As I say, I love to be around him. He's just a great guy. You know, Jerry, you are, um, boy, there's just, I, I'm not sure there's anybody better at judging talent, and it's very difficult. You traded for Kobe Bryant, a high school player on draft day, Jerry, and that was a real gamble. When you, when you watched Kobe, now years later, all of us said, oh, he looks a little like Michael. But when you traded for Kobe, was part of it you saying, I see Michael, or did that develop for you as an executive? No, I, I just saw an extraordinary gifted player. Obviously, there's other factors leading into it. Um, we, we were trying to acquire Shaquille O'Neal, which we were lucky enough to get. 
And we tried to like crazy to trade him, but I thought he really was the best player in the draft. I saw him perform uh, in workouts, a lot of film on him in high school, but he was a uniquely gifted athlete, okay? But the other thing, I think the things that he had that maybe uh, were somewhat like Michael was his fierce desire to be the best. And if you watch that documentary, okay, and when they won, I would guarantee you the last image that I remembered last night, Michael Jordan was standing on a table exalting the fans and trying to get everyone involved. And if you look, you see Kobe Bryant doing the very same thing. He loved, he loved Michael Jordan. He emulated Michael Jordan, and he was very much kind of the same personality as Michael Jordan, but he was not Michael Jordan. He was Kobe Bryant, and his, his thirst and desire to gain information to get better was almost like Michael Jordan was his hero, and he was going to do everything he could to have the same success, but more importantly, not let anyone to outwork him. Jerry West joining us. Jerry, sometimes uh, we romanticize the past and we ignore how great people are now. I think the skill level of NBA players is absolutely remarkable. Ball handling, shooting, I think it's unbelievable. But there is something about Michael's era and your era, which I grew up on. First NBA game I saw was you and Gail Goodrich and Wilt with a headband. And I I can remember being in my bunk bed as a kid. Um, There is something about the older times, Jerry, where there was less money, guys were fighting for a small piece of the pie, it, 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 it was a more physical league. I understand people liking the old days better. We, we tend to go, this, this is better, that is better. Do you compare the two eras, Jerry? What do you like about Michael's era, and what do you like about today's players and era? Well, Michael's era, Michael started this era, okay, to be honest with you. He was... Um, you know, you look at players and the way the rules have changed. You know, at one time, uh, Colin, you, you, you players that were really good had to work in the summer to support their families. With the enormity of the money, the enormity of the uh, equipment, the teaching ability, the facilities, the training, the players today have such an advantage. It's a, it's a joke, okay? They can really, if they're willing to work hard enough, and they want to be something special. We see an incredible amount of great, great athletes. But in watching them, they get to a certain point, and, and you see that they improve some because naturally the experience and playing against great players, but these truly, really great ones come back with something different every year. You know, I see, the, I see people rating players of all different eras, and I see players that are ranked, like 24th, 25th, and stuff like that, all-time great players, they made the all-pro team one time. One time. <laughs> and to me, you're not, you're not, you're not a t- t- top 25 player unless you've made it a minimum of five, a minimum. And this guy here is, and I'm talking about Michael, I'm talking about Kobe Bryant, they have a long, illustrious careers, and Michael could have continued to play. But I, I'm not so sure that the enormous pressure on him, and if you watched him go anywhere, he was like the Pied Piper. You could not keep people away from him. He just had that, that incredible charisma. But when he played, every night he played, he was not going to take a night off. But, and they see that kind of harsh side with his interacting of, of the other players. The other side is what the death of his father. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How that affected him. How much he admired him. How much he depended upon him. And then the thing that no one ever considers are the people that would be considered menial that work for organization that players get attracted to. And his security guard, the gentleman who had lung cancer and passed away, for a player of Michael stature, who has seemingly is just so obsessed with his family, uh, his career, 
to go out of his way to go visit this gentleman, it, it really tells you who he is. As I say, I love Michael Jordan. I absolutely love Michael Jordan. He just, he's the best, um, he's the best athlete I've ever seen in basketball. Uh, people are going to make comparisons, but I wonder today with the rules having changed today, you can't hand check, you can't touch anyone, you can walk all over the place, you can carry the basketball all over the place. And this is the evolution of the game. If he could have added that to his game, my goodness, what would we see today? Yeah. You know, Jerry, it's interesting. Again, uh, generationally, I remember this well. As I watched the documentary, I saw Dennis Rodman. Dennis is terrific, but was his own spirit. Well, you inherited Wilt Chamberlain, who was a very, very, Wilt today with social media, Lord. Um, and I want to talk about that. Michael was able to harness Dennis's uniqueness, and it worked, although it could be distracting. You did the exact same thing with Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry. You were very mature and very focused. Um, if you'd like to talk about Wilt and Rodman, but th- I think that's we, – we don't look at Rodman. I thought Michael made Rodman work and let him be Rodman, and I don't think that's easy if you could talk about that. Well, you know, obviously Dennis Rodman was a great player, and I really liked Dennis personally. He was with us in Los Angeles for a short period of time. I didn't work out there. He was, you know, he was really, he was really troubled during that period of time. But I think Phil Jackson should get an enormous amount of credit for being able to handle him. But I think along with Michael, and I think Dennis, if he respects you, he's going to do anything for you. He really is. Uh, but I think the respect he had for Michael, because no one was going to outwork Michael, but Dennis Rodman's work ethic, his basketball instinct, his basketball uh, intelligence was off the chart. But Phil Jackson has, has, did a great job, even in Los Angeles, when you had two distinctly different personalities, Kobe Bryant and, and also uh, um, Shaquille O'Neal. <clears throat> the way Phil handled that, I'm sure that any coach, any coach that had Dennis Rodman, if he would leave to go to, he needed to go to, to have a vacation in the middle of the season. <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like that. And, um, and then um, to watch him, I think the funniest thing, because to go to the WW, what, WWW, the World Wrestling Association, or whatever it was at that point in time, and no one knew where he was. I think the way Phil handled that was absolutely unbelievable. And the team, because they knew of his importance on their team, that Michael would, I never saw him say anything to Dennis Rodman on these, on the, on this broadcast. He accepted Dennis for who he was and how important he was for winning. Yep, that's well put. Hey, by the way, finally, uh, I have said, uh, Joy and I have said, I think the Clippers are built to win a championship. I, I don't worry too much about seeding. I think your team has enough veterans and coaching to overcome having to play some games on the road. Uh, we got a, a couple minutes left. How much fun has it been for you? It's a unique roster of young, old, veterans, new kids. It's a fascinating culture you have developed there. And I have to imagine this really lands well for you because it's not been easy. You've got another big brand in town, which you helped create. If you could talk about the growth of the Clippers and, and, and what it's meant for you. Well, I think an awful lot of it, Colin, as you're well aware, is that, you know, Jerry Krause mentioned organizations win championships. That's not true, okay? It is not true. Players win championships, but it's up to the people internally to go get those players. And if you can't do that, and if you don't have the right support group around, you can't do it. You have to have smart people. You have to have real committed people. Steve Ballmer, there's never been a better owner. I work with Jerry Buss, very much like him, a man of the people. Uh, uh, Michael Heisley, who I work for in, in Memphis, an unbelievable guy. But we do have a very capable team. The, the age group of this team is incredible. And this could be a dominant defensive team uh, with the work of Lawrence Frank, uh, our staff, uh, Michael Winger. Uh, 
Steve has allowed them to bring in players that others would not want to pay. And we feel very fortunate that we have a team that can be really competitive, but it's kind of, you know, you get up to the top of the mountain and you want to go down the other side of the mountain. As the season was wearing along, you could see all these teams. There weren't that many games left to the regular season. And we just got to the top of the mountain, and we were going to go down the easy side of the mountain, not the hard part. Every team in the league faces that. But this team was getting better and better and yep. better. And our coaching staff was very positive about this team. And that, that to me, says a lot. But um, I think it would be great if we could have a series, uh, if we're going to have a season, if we could have a series, the Lakers and the Clippers. That would really be fun for me. But more importantly, with everyone looking for competition, I mean, it's sad. I mean, I look for anything to watch this competition. I can't find anything because <laughs> there's no people there. There's something about having the crowd there, but can you imagine if 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 we'd have a Western Conference championship with the Lakers and the Clippers, the two teams in the finals? Can you imagine what the ratings would be like <laughs> for that series? It would do wonders for the people who are just groping for things to try to find this competitive. Yeah, I mean, you can get on the air and talk about all you want to, but people are just creating stories today, uh, creating content that has little or no interest to what America is about. That's about competition. And I think it would be fun, as I say, the, the Lakers were my life, okay? They were my life. And they're no longer part of my life. And as I say, I'm thrilled that someone uh, like Steve Ballmer thought I could help a little bit. Uh, he's a great owner. More importantly, he's a great guy. And uh, I'm lucky at this point in my life to be able to hopefully finish my career with the Clippers, I'm not going anywhere else, but I would love to see the Clippers get into the finals and win the NBA championship and see what would happen in Los Angeles. I think it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> you look fantastic. I love hearing you and seeing you, and I'm, I'm so thankful you stopped by our show on a Monday. Congrats on all your success going forward, Jerry. Thank you so much. Colin, great to spend time with you. Let's have some basketball, please. Please. I need some basketball. I need Clippers, Lakers. That'd be pretty good, right? Bucks, Celtics, East, Clippers, Lakers, West. Good stuff. Jerry West. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.